Second-ranked Western made its first appearance in Ellensburg since 1993 on Saturday. Darren Erath hits Adam Foster on the 28-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter as the Vikes built a 10-point margin. But the Wildcats, who'd lost four of their last five going into this one, picked off Erath two times and blocked a Western punt. Central quarterback Ryan Fournier ran for this 28-yard touchdown and threw for two others as the Cats upset Western 34-20, snapping the Vikes' 15-game regular season win streak. Western hasn't won in Ellensburg since 1977. After losing a regular season game for the first time in 15 tries, the Western football team had another streak snapped yesterday when they fell in the NAIA national poll. The Vikings are number eight this week following Saturday's loss at Central. It's the first time in 13 weeks that Western has not been ranked either number one or two in the country. Of course, they ended last season as the top-ranked team and then lost to the very same Wildcats in the first round of the national playoffs. Next up for the Vikes, an up-and-coming Eastern Oregon squad that is ranked 22nd and leads the CFA standings for the first time in the 12-year history of the league. That is at Civic Field this Saturday. Eighth-ranked Western is at home tomorrow. The Vikings are hoping to bounce back from their first regular season loss in two years when they take on number 22 Eastern Oregon at Civic Field. Uh, hopefully we've had w our one loss for the year, and uh, we just didn't play well, and you know, for whatever reason, you certainly give credit to Central, but uh, uh, we were disappointed with our performance. We've had to live with that performance for, for one week, and, and uh, now we get ready for a very good Eastern Oregon team. The Vikings hope some home cooking helps them get back on track against a team that leads the league standings. This is not going to be a pushover by any means, but uh, we're excited to play another quality team and, and excited to be back home. It's, it's been a couple weeks, a uh, long trip to Southern Oregon and then uh, playing over at Central. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting back to Civic and uh, in front of our home fans and having a, having a go at it. In college football, the Huskies are ranked 19th after that big 21-10 win at USC Saturday. The Cougars had a bye. Eighth-ranked Western was hoping to get back on track against number 22 Eastern Oregon Saturday at Civic Field, but the Mountaineers strike first as Rich Davis hits Roger Berger on the 9-yard TD pass, 6 to nothing after the PAT is blocked. The Vikings couldn't get into the end zone in the first half, but Wade Gaber's toe gave them the lead with a school record four second quarter field goals, including this 50-yarder, 12-6 Western at the half. The Vikes finally hit Paydirt one minute into the fourth quarter as Ryan Wiggins goes 43 yards. He topped the 1,000-yard mark for the season with 154 on the day. And Chris Nickel racked up his 10th straight game with over 100 yards receiving. Darren Erath threads it to Scenic for the 37-yard touchdown to cap the scoring. Western bounces back from that loss at Central with a 25-6 victory. I was really pleased with the way we came out and took control of the game in the second half. Our defense played the type of football that, that uh, I think our defense is capable of playing. And offensively, we ran the football in the second half and, uh, and really, I think, took control of the game at that point. Because Eastern Oregon was the only team in the league that uh, controlled their own destiny. And we kind of took that away today. So. Uh, it all lies on our shoulders now if we can just finish out the rest of the season, a couple wins. Uh, we needed this win big time. Uh, I think this boosts our confidence. It, uh, you know, we were a little uh, down after the Central game, and this is really what we needed to come in here and beat a real good team. And uh, now we've got to look to Simon Fraser next week. And more on that great offensive double duo of Wiggins and Nickel tomorrow. The Western football team is ranked 8th again this week. The Vikings are coming off a big 25-6 win over then number 22 Eastern Oregon on Saturday. A couple of players received league honors for their performances in that one. Place kicker Wade Gabers is the co-offensive player of the week in the CFA after kicking four second quarter field goals, including a career best 50-yarder. Gabers is the national leader in kick scoring. And linebacker Mark Spencer, number 28 for Western, is the defensive player of the week after a team-high 14 tackles, his fifth straight double-figure tackle game. On offense, running back Ryan Wiggins became the seventh player in school history to top the 1,000-yard mark for the season. He's second in the nation in that category after replacing the injured John Frazier, and it has Wiggins shaking his head. Surprising. I mean, I didn't think about that coming into the season, but now that it's here, I don't know, it really hasn't set in yet. 
Then there's wideout Chris Nickel, who didn't think he'd even be playing for the Vikings this season, but it was discovered the school's all-time leading receiver had another year of eligibility. Well, it's been Christmas all year long in, in terms of that. Uh, no, we're very fortunate. I'm, I'm real happy for Chris because I think he gained so much confidence over the course of last year that to be able to, you know, I'll, you know, think it was over and then come back and, and be granted a, another year, uh, you know, to see him have the type of year, what a gift, and, and uh, uh, it, uh, it's helped us. Yeah, it's helped our offense quite a bit. After last year. Getting back to the gridiron, the eighth-ranked Western football team hosts Simon Fraser right here at Civic Field tomorrow, and the Vikings are looking at it as a must-win game. With one loss in conference play already, Western is in a four-way tie for first. It makes us uh, focus more, you know, now that the pressure's off of us, you know, the undefeated seasons, you know, no longer can be possible. Uh, I think we're just focused now on trying to make the playoffs, which is a lot better than that. Hey, we just look at it as, I mean, every game from here on out is a playoff game, and uh, we're coming out with that kind of attitude, that uh, focus, and, uh, you know, our backs are against the wall, and... Uh, it's a good spot to be in, really, because, I mean, every game is meaningful, and that's why we're playing ball. Last year, then top-ranked Western rolled to a 45 to nothing win over the Klansmen, but SFU is one of the teams tied for the league lead. We beat up on them in the past, but they're much improved, and, you know, they're a solid ball club, and they beat Central, so. When you get to game eight and game nine and you got something riding on the games, everybody steps it up and, uh, you know, it's football weather all of a sudden. It's, it's cold, it's nasty, and it, it's uh, uh, the type of uh, type of weather that uh, that you enjoy as a football player to get out there and, and get after it. This is going to be a fun game on Saturday, and uh, uh, Simon Frazier's a good team. It's, it's two good teams battling out that both have championship aspirations right now. Both are thinking playoffs, and uh, you couldn't ask for anything more. Well, there is one thing Western 17 seniors would like, and that's another home game. They might get it if they make the national playoffs and are able to host a contest right here at Civic Field. Highlights from the Western Simon Fraser game on Monday morning, and don't forget to join us early for high school highlights. Have a great weekend, and see you then. Eighth-ranked Western hosted Simon Fraser, which came in with the league's best rushing average, but the Vikings' defense held the Klansmen to minus seven yards.